friends! Today we are going to make some pulled candy. Uh, the specific kind that we're going to make is called saltwater taffy, and contrary to popular belief, it does not actually contain any salt water, um, just salt. So I'm going to show you everything that you need to make uh, saltwater taffy. Uh, you're going to need sugar, one cup. You're going to need a tablespoon of cornstarch. You're going to need two thirds of a cup of corn syrup, a tablespoon of butter, half a cup of water, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. You're also going to want some flavoring um, and some food coloring. Um, I have a bunch of different flavors and food colorings here, um, and then I'm going to decide which ones I choose. Uh, you're also going to need some tools. You're going to need um, a spatula, some scissors, either a thermometer or uh, a measuring cup or some other um, clear vessel uh, filled with ice water. Um, you're also going to want a plate and um, that plate is going to end up being oiled or greased. Uh, so I have an old butter wrapper that's got some butter still on it that I'm going to use. Um, and you're going to want something to help you to lift and fold the candy. Um, so a spatula like this is a little too bendy for candy. Um, I have some metal guys that I'm gonna use, but you could also use um, a heat proof stiff plastic spatula um, if you wanted. It just has to be stiff enough uh, that you're gonna be able to lift the candy because it's quite heavy. Um, and it's going to need to be thin enough that it can get under the edge of the candy. You're also going to want some wax paper, and that's uh, what's going to help you wrap up the candy at the end. And finally, you're going to need a pot, because candy is cooked sugar. One of the most important things that you need for candy making is corn syrup. Now, it doesn't have to be corn syrup. There are a couple of different substitutes that you can use. But the real reason that we want something like corn syrup, um, which is very high in a type of sugar called glucose, is that the regular sugar that we have is very high in something called sucrose. Um, and sucrose and glucose are both kinds of sugar. Sucrose really likes to crystallize, um, kind of like if you've ever had maple syrup at the very bottom of the can, there are all of those little like pokey crystals. Um, or if you've ever kind of mixed sugar in water and let it crystals climb up the rope. Um, those are sucrose crystals, and sucrose really likes to do that. But if we want a candy that we're going to be able to pull um, and turn into little taffies like we're doing today, we need something that's a little more stable and isn't going to crystallize. And something that's high in glucose is going to do that for us. So uh, corn syrup is probably the most common one. Uh, rice syrup also works quite well. Um, Molasses and honey are both okay substitutes. They don't work as well as corn syrup, um, but they do prevent some crystallization. So if you can't have any grains, um, so you don't want to use corn syrup or you don't want to use rice syrup, molasses or honey is an okay alternative. You still might get some crystals, but you should be pretty okay. Another important concept in candy making is about what happens when we cook sugar. So um, everything uh, in the world, just about, has some amount of water in it. Um, and when we cook things, often what we're doing is we're taking the water out of them by boiling. So all of the water molecules kind of evaporate and uh, go into the air instead of staying in the thing that we're cooking. Sugar is the same way. So what we're doing when we're cooking sugar is we're getting rid of a lot of the water content. We're making it thicker, we're making it darker, we're caramelizing those sugars. Um, and if you've been to home ec before, you know that um, the caramelization of sugars is one of the things that makes foods taste good. So when we cook sugar, um, the reason that a thermometer is helpful is because there are some stages at, of, of different temperatures that make the sugar have different characteristics. And this is something that cooks and pastry chefs have known about and kind of solidified for centuries. Um, we're really good, it turns out, at knowing what to do with sugar. So um, the sugar temperature that we're going to need for our saltwater taffy today 
is somewhere between 250 and 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Now for reference, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going up to a, a much higher temperature than that. And so it's really important when you're cooking sugar to be very careful and respectful. Um, the pot is gonna be really hot. The syrup inside is gonna be really hot. Um, so it's good to have an adult with you. Um, and it's also good to take precautions like I'm wearing an apron. You might also want to have some oven mitts if your pot is not um, super good at keeping the heat inside. Um, if you don't have a thermometer though, we also know that at that temperature between 250 and 266 degrees Fahrenheit, sugar behaves in a certain way when it's suddenly cooled very quickly. And that's what our um, uh, container of ice water is for. So the 250 to 266 degree range that we're looking for is something called the hard ball stage. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna drop some syrup into our ice water. We're gonna take it out of the pan, put it into the ice water, and then we're gonna pick it up with our fingers out of the ice water. It will be quite cool, it won't hurt us. Um, and what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, turn into, or, or we're gonna be able to turn it quite easily into a ball um, that doesn't squish. We're gonna try to press it and it's not gonna squish, but it's still gonna be a little sticky on our fingers. Um, and so that hard ball stage is the stage that we wanna cook um, this candy to. And I'm gonna see if I'm able to show it to you uh, later in this video. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to because of how fast sugar cooks. Um, if it cooks too much um, and gets into the 270 to 290 degree range that we call soft crack, then um, it'll be really hard to pull our saltwater taffy. Um, soft crack is still okay for pulling candy, but um, for taffy, we want it to be kind of like soft and still chewy a little bit. Soft crack will get us like a hard candy that you can crunch. Um, so that's the big difference. And of course, if we don't cook it enough, then no matter how much we pull it, it's never going to solidify. Um, so with that, the only last thing that I want to talk to you about um, before we get started is how we deal with very sticky sugar. So there are two ways that we deal with very sticky sugar. One is with um, grease or oil. Um, I'm going to be using butter today, but you can use any kind of unflavored oil. Sunflower oil is a really good one. Um, coconut oil can be a little bit too flavorful, um, but if you like the coconut taste, then by all means go for coconut oil. Um, and the reason that we want to use oil or, or butter or some kind of fat is to insulate our um, hands. So we're going to be rubbing our hands, really coating them in butter. And that layer of fat is going to protect our skin from the heat of the candy when we're touching it. Um, but also because it makes it a lot easier to clean up uh, like our plate and stuff when the, the candy can just kind of slip right off of it. And when we're done, all we need is a sink full of hot water and the candy will just dissolve uh, whatever has left stuck to our pot or our spatula or our plate. So speaking of washing, I'm going to wash my hands and then we can get started. So I'm going to start by putting my sugar um, and my cornstarch into my pot and mixing them together. Now a lot of taffies don't have cornstarch. Cornstarch is specific to saltwater taffy um, and other related kinds of taffy because it's what helps to give it its kind of characteristic texture and color, kind of like soft and pillowy and a little cloudy. Um, so now I'm gonna add my cornstarch. 
And I'm doing this all with my pot on the stove, but my stove is not on yet. So I want to be adding things together, um, not while the stove is on. Um, then I'm gonna add my butter. I'm gonna add my water. And I'm going to add my salt. Now, I'm gonna turn on my stove to kind of a medium heat. Now, this is gonna go pretty quickly on my stove because I have um, a gas stove and gas stoves cook a lot more quickly than electric stoves. Um, so if you have an electric stove, you're gonna need to be extra patient. Um, but I can promise you it's gonna be worth it. So I'm just gonna keep stirring this until all the sugar and the corn syrup and the butter is dissolved. Um, I'm actually gonna turn this down a little bit. With candy, because it cooks so quickly, it's actually better to take a longer time over a lower heat because if your heat is low, you have a little bit more control over how fast the candy is cooking and you don't have to worry about burning it. Burnt sugar smells terrible. Um, and if you do burn your candy, the best thing to do is to immediately take it off the heat um, and to let it sit. So it's gonna be really tempting. You're gonna wanna pour water into it, but don't do that um, because that the candy is gonna be so hot that there's gonna be a huge cloud of steam and you might burn yourself. Uh, the good news is that even burnt sugar is actually pretty easy to come off after you've let it wait for maybe five or 10 minutes um, and it's cooled down a bit, then you can pour some hot water in and it'll dissolve the sugar and uh, you can clean your pot and get started again. So everything is all dissolved into itself now and the, the mixture is gonna be kind of cloudy. Um, if you've worked with sugar before, you might Kind of be expecting it to be clear but that's the cornstarch and the butter that are making it uh, cloudy and also all of these little tiny bubbles are because it is starting to come uh, to a boil and get warm and so I'm gonna stop stirring it I'm just gonna scrape down the edges one last time and then I'm gonna stop stirring it because uh, stirring adds air and I don't want to add air I just want my um, sugar to cook like this. So you can see that it's getting lots and lots of bubbles. That is because it is coming to a boil. So we're gonna start now. I'm gonna use my thermometer um, to test the temperature. And you can see that it's already quite hot. And remember, we want to get it to about somewhere between 250 and 266 and look you can see that the the sugar as it boils is getting taller and taller and taller um, so this is an important thing even though it looks like not a lot of ingredients you do want a pretty big pot because you don't want the sugar to boil over that's really tough to clean in getting ready for my candy I have put a lot of butter on this plate on my spatulas um, and on my scissors, which I'm gonna be using later to cut. Um, I've also decided that I'm gonna use, uh, my flavoring is gonna be orange blossom um, and I'm going to use some yellow food coloring. Now, my food coloring is a gel food coloring, but uh, you can use whatever food coloring you want. Um, I would suggest starting with just a few drops um, of food coloring and just a few drops of flavoring um, because saltwater taffy is kind of like light uh, and doesn't have a very strong color or a very strong flavor. You're also, what I've done here is I've taken out uh, this tub of vegan butter because um, I'm gonna use it to oil my hands and I'm gonna leave it right there um, because when I'm handling sugar, I want to make sure my hands are covered in oil. Um, I'm using vegan butter because it's a lot easier to take something hard and melt it into my hands. But if you wanna use um, oil or any other kind of fat, 
totally go ahead and use that. Solid isn't the only way to go. So you can see that here we're kind of hovering close to around 250. And so that's the reason why sugar uh, stages are a bracket of temperature. So it's between 250 and 266. So we wanna make sure that it's staying stably above 250 and not going below 250. So see how it's kind of going a little bit down into 249. Um, and this is one of the reasons why it's really good to have um, a slow, low heat on your stove because then you're really able to control those variances in temperature. Um, so when this s starts to hit probably 255, um, then um, I'm going to get on to the next stage. And the next stage is adding my food coloring and my flavoring. And before I do that, I'm going to want to turn off the stove. And if you have um, an electric stove, you're gonna wanna take your pan and take it away from the stove. Because I have a gas stove, I don't have to do that because uh, the gas stops heating right away. But if you have an electric stove, you need to move it away from the heat so that it doesn't overcook. So I'm gonna put some candy into my cold water and you can see that it's made like quite a string. And now I'm gonna reach into the cold water and pick it up and see how I can make it into a ball. So there it is, that's the ball. And I can push it a little bit so it's not quite ready. When this is a truly firm ball, it's gonna be like, I'm not gonna be, a truly hard ball rather, I'm not gonna be able to squish it quite this much. So this is a firm ball stage and a couple degrees more and it will be perfect. All right, look at that. So I'm turning off my stove, getting rid of my thermometer. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of food coloring my gel food coloring, just a little. I'm gonna use my spatula to pop that in. And I'm gonna stir it in. Yeah, look at that, that's very nice. And I'm also going to put in just a little bit of, see, just the tiniest bit of flavor. And I'm gonna stir that in. Oh, that smells really lovely. Now I'm gonna take my candy and I'm gonna put it onto this plate. Now remember, the plate has butter on it so that the candy won't stick. And I'm gonna get as much of the candy out of the pan as I can and then to make my cleanup job after easier, I'm going to immediately put some water into the pot so that the candy doesn't get too hard. And I'm just gonna leave it here. So now, while this is here, we're gonna cool it for mm, two or three minutes. And what, to help cool it, we're gonna lift it up and fold it in on itself like this. And so you can see because my plate has been buttered, it's the candy is coming off really easily. And because my spatula has been buttered, the candy is coming off really easily. But I might need to add a little bit of extra butter just to make sure it stays um, non-sticky. Um, and if you need to do that, just be very careful because your spatula might be hot. So we're just gonna keep turning the candy over and over. Now, when we are pulling taffy, so turning it like this is the good first step, but soon we're gonna be pulling it. Oh, see, look, I need to add a little bit more butter again. Um, what we're doing is we are changing its texture by incorporating air bubbles. So the air bubbles are an important part of what 
um, makes the candy into um, its own delicious self. And for something like um, saltwater taffy, they're what help to give it its special texture. That's still a little hot. So I'm going to keep turning this over on itself for another minute or two. Um, and then I am going to touch it. Um, now, before you touch candy, you need to have two things ready for you. You need to have your hands covered in oil to um, kind of protect you from the heat of the candy to provide an insulation. And you also want to have um, a bowl of cold water ready just in case that insulation fails and you need to soak your hands in cold water right away. My candy is just about ready for me to handle. And so see, I am really coating my hands in fat. See how shiny they are? Because I don't want to hurt myself. So now I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop all of this candy up. I'm gonna scoop this candy up. And see, it's already starting to get a little hard. And then, I'm gonna keep scooping it and using my hands now. So it's still pretty hot, so I, I can't hold it in my hands yet. Um, but I can start using my hands to help me kind of pull it. So this is one of the reasons why it's important to have your butter close by so that you can re-butter your hands when you need to. And you might be saying, wow, Jessica, there's a lot of the candy that's getting stuck on the plate and getting stuck on your scraper here. Um, and that's true. Um, the good news is that'll all come off with a little bit of hot water. Um, we're going to use as much of it as we can into the actual candy, but you are going to lose some. Don't worry about it. So you can see here that I'm kind of starting to make the candy into a rope by kind of letting it hang like this. And that is when it's cool enough that I don't need my scraper anymore. That's what I'm going to be doing between my hands is pulling it like this to make a rope. And as I pull it, the color is going to get lighter because we're adding more air. Like that. And the texture is going to get a little bit fluffier. Any bits that harden too fast, they're just going to get incorporated into the rest of the candy. And the heat from the rest of the candy is going to remelt them so we're all going to be at the same texture. Rebutter, especially the tips of my fingers. Now, scrape it all into one nice pile. Now, I'm going to start pulling it. So to pull taffy looks like this. I'm going to pull and fold, pull and fold, pull and fold. And if it gets too hot, I can just put it down. And I'm going to put it down on kind of halfway on my scraper so that when I'm ready to pick it up again, it's really easy to get that scraper under it. Pick it up, pull it off the scraper, pull and fold, pull and fold. So I'm also now, as I'm pulling, incorporating a twist. And that twist is also helping um, incorporate more air bubbles between the layers of candy. I'm going to add a little bit more butter to my hands. And yeah, look at that. I'm not going to 
pull until it gets cold. Um, it's going to take a while for it to get cold. But I am going to pull until it gets really hard to pull. You can see that it's starting to get really tough. And my fingers are starting to stick, so I'm going to add just a little bit more butter, this time not to protect me from the heat, but to prevent sticking. And I'm probably only going to be able to pull this for another minute or two before it gets too, too tough. So now that it's really tough to pull, it's pretty much just about ready to cut. So you see here, if I hold it like this, it's still drooping a little bit. I don't want it to be drooping at all. So I have to pull until it stops drooping. And this is really tricky. And so if it's still a little bit droopy, when you have done enough pulling, you can't possibly anymore, don't worry about that. It'll just mean that your candies will be a little bit softer and chewier. And because this is saltwater taffy, soft and chewy is not a problem. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold this up. It has gotten to the point where I can't pull it anymore, I don't think. And I'm going to twist it into as much of an even rope as I can. Because I want all my candies to be about the same size. Great, like that. So now I'm going to take my scissors, and I put butter on them before, but I'm going to put a little bit more now. You can use oil as well. And I'm going to snip the candy off, just like this. There we go. And so then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wax paper. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just going to cut one little square to show you. And I'm going to take my candy and wrap it up in a little wax paper package. And there we go. My saltwater taffy.